Navigation. Smartphones and tablets have become so great nowadays. You have the GPS built in there, they're waterproof. Uh, you have internet, all the apps and maps that you can think of. Um, so as a travel or adventure companion, uh, it's a great tool. But if you're going to take this on a real adventure trip, it has its limitations. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I've tried to overcome those um, with my setup here. But then you have the dedicated Garmin GPS devices that are made for this. Uh, they're waterproof, rugged, and they can stand temperatures and yeah, a lot of things. But in my world, perhaps because I'm a tech geek, I think they are too limited. If you go Garmin, um, that's great, but you are in the Garmin world. It's really enclosed and there, there is nothing much else you can do. Also depends on what type of navigation you want to do. If you just want to navigate somewhere and let the GPS take you there, um, doesn't really matter what you have. Um, just follow the directions, but that's, that's not much fun in my opinion. So what I'd like to do is have the outdoor map. I'd like to explore, see what roads goes here and there. Oh, this road ends there, but this continues. I go around looking at the map like that. But then when I end up on tarmac again, I need to be somewhere or find a place. I just pop up Google Maps and switch to that and navigate the normal way. So what are the common problems that I have using a mobile phone as a navigator? First of all, gloves. Um, I need to have, in order to operate the phone, I have to have the appropriate uh, phone gloves, phone compatible gloves, so I, I can use the screen. Otherwise, I, I just stuck, uh, I have to stop, I take my gloves off, make a small adjustment on the screen, put the gloves back on and go about and that's really tedious so especially if you're exploring uh, because if you're following a, just a line on the map you don't have to adjust that much you just uh, uh, follow the line you don't have to zoom in zoom out or, or uh, pan around but when you're exploring you want to get situa situational awareness. Where on the map are you? You want to zoom out and then you want to zoom back in. You want to pan around and so on. And with gloves on that are not compatible, then you have to stop all the time. Still, if you have the compatible gloves, uh, if it's raining, then it's really wonky with the uh, navigation anyway. Challenge number two, um, online maps. You have some really great maps on the phone, but if you are required to use internet to get those maps along the route and you keep downloading as you go, uh, you are dependent on the internet connection. I mean, what if the connection drops, you're in a remote area where you don't have any? You have to go searching for the highest spot and try to download the next part of the map. And safety. Uh, if you bring your only mobile phone on the bike, something happens, you drop the bike down a ravine or whatever. I dropped my bike down the ravine. I better call someone. It's on the bike. So let's take a look at what I've done to overcome uh, most parts of, of uh, these challenges. First of all, the actual device, uh, the smartphone. I still have my iPhone that I used to use for this. So I, I bought myself a used 
uh, Samsung Galaxy, Galaxy S9 Plus. That's a quite big screen that I think fits well here. Um, I choose Android because it's much more customizable and there are more apps available for, for the Android that are really good for navigation, such as the Tet app, uh, Locus Maps, I like that one very much, and you have the, um, I show you the app soon, the uh, dry mode dashboard. It's not as rugged as it should be, I guess. There are much more rugged uh, Android devices, such as uh, the, yeah, you have a whole category of, of uh, military grade uh, mobile phones. You also have the Galaxy Active Tab, which is a really cool tablet, which is really rugged, but I think it's too big to put up here. I've seen some put it down on the handlebar, but that's too low in my opinion. Um, from there, there's also some really cool um, devices made specifically for, for this from uh, uh, Carpe Itter. Uh, they have uh, a device that they sell, but it's quite pricey. I think it's a, above 800 euros. Um, but that would be ideal because it's smaller than the Samsung G Active Tab, so it would fit nicely here, I think. So, but this used quite cheap Android device is what I use. Next, uh, charging. Uh, I don't use cable for charging uh, anymore because as soon as it gets uh, moisture in the charging port and you put the cable in, this dude starts complaining and you cannot charge. I've actually been a tour guide uh, with 15 bikes behind me and the phone drops dead and I, because of it, it hadn't charged, uh, charged all day because of, of uh, all the rain and everything. So there I was stuck with the whole team and I didn't know where to go. So this is really important to me. So for this I use from Quadlock, the wireless motorcycle charger. And it's 10 watts and it sufficiently charges the phone enough when using it with the GPS and everything going on. It has a positive charging, so I actually charge up the battery while using the phone. It has a USB-C cable in the back, but it's really nice because it's, it's waterproof. So it, it has a, these uh, rubber ceilings and goes in deep, so it's really thought through to be waterproof. My only, my only problem right now is I still use the ordinary USB port to, to charge it. So I have to do something about water protecting this part and then I'm all set. And regarding software, I, I use the drive mode dashboard. That's for Android only. Um, and this takes over as the home screen of the device. So I never see anything else uh, than this home screen. I don't have to start it or anything. It's always there. So I close it. I turn it on. This is the start screen and just bam, there it is. And from this one, I can choose to start, for instance, Locus Maps, like that. I can zoom out. And here I have my Rally Roadbook that I can use. I've made this for my gravel route and tried to make a roadbook out of that. So uh, that's really fun. I may, uh, I'll make a video uh, out of that separately. I have offline maps and I also have uh, navigation info all downloaded to this device. And it's all within Locus Maps, you can do that. It's really nice. Some really nice tutorials out there. But this is not an app tutorial, so I leave it at that. Okay, so no more true need for internet. Internet is a bonus now. So I can still use this in all the countries that I want to use to navigate in. And the good thing with Locus Maps uh, is that they have their own set of really detailed maps um, that you can buy and it's really cheap. It's about one euro per country. The full country uh, as offline maps for one euro. 
So, yeah, match that Garmin. And now, the glove killer, or at least I can keep the gloves on actually, because this is the crown of uh, the setup. The Carpe Iter controller. So here it is, the little Bluetooth device from Carpe, uh, sold by uh, Thorc Racing, in, made in Portugal. They make a lot of uh, rally equipment and they also sell and manufacture the um, Android device I spoke of. So when you buy this, you get a clamp on here that makes it possible to mount it on the handlebar like this but you have to squeeze in between this panel and uh, the rear view mirror, which also holds the clutch. And you, you need to move that to squeeze that in there, or you have to put it out here, and I think that's too far away. This is uh, the mount for it. So as an option you, for uh, about, I think it's 14 euro, you can uh, purchase, uh, it's just a piece of metal, uh, that, so you can mount it on the rear view mirror. It uses battery, uh, but one charge lasts uh, about a week of riding, according, I haven't tested that, but that's what it says. So uh, I slide it on here, bam, and now, and now I can use it pretty accessible. So, Let's, let's bring up the phone uh, here so we can see it, how it works, like that. So it's off, the, the phone is off. I just click here on this joystick. Uh, these two buttons can be pressed, this joystick can be moved in four directions and also pressed. Uh, so I click it once and it comes alive. I click it, click it again to get through the, to open up the phone. And now I can yeah, go in here, I can, it has this uh, dashboard, has its own map and so on, but I usually use uh, Locus Maps. So here we are, wanna zoom in a bit, like that, I'm on this little trail. Uh, I can press and hold to uh, go into the, the compass heading uh, so that it turns with the bike or I can press and hold to go back out. I can zoom out and pan around and so on. I can leave this app, go back out and I can bring up the TET app, the Google Maps. Google Maps I can use the same way. It adapts to over 20 different uh, apps. It, it, it's pre-configured for that. And as you can see, I have really bad internet, so uh, I'm backing out of that again. Um, yeah, so it's really, really nice to uh, move around. And I can do so much with it. I can, um, besides working the map, I can uh, bring up the HUD, like this, and perhaps I want to uh, adjust the screen brightness and so on. I want to go darker like that or I want to uh, turn on the automatic light and yeah go back like this and and I can yeah start re recording the route and a lot of things like that. So this is really really nice to have. Yeah so there we have it. Um, the only downside still that I have is the USB-A port fr uh, from the bike uh, 12 volt outlet. I need to get the, the ideal would be to connect it directly to the electrical system. The Android, the Samsung I have is great, uh, but it's not super rugged, of course. If it gets good, too cold or too hot, I think it will start complaining. So it's not uh, made for crossing uh, Sahara Desert or anything. So, but yeah, I really enjoy now the ability to stop worrying about the charge port and stop 
fiddling around with the gloves and and navigating the apps and panning the maps and so on. So I'm happy about that. Um, nothing of this is sponsored by anyone. I paid hard-earned bucks for it, uh, but that's why we work, to buy bike parts, isn't it? If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and bells and likes if you like this one. Um, keep the questions or comments uh, coming in the comment section below and yeah I have really just found out about the cool world of rally road books and I've started making my own and and try to use them so I'm, I'm going to make a video uh, later about that uh, and how you can enjoy that with your friends and so on on a really playful amateur level not going to the real rallies yet but the thought is growing in my head okay so thanks for watching please check out our other videos and stay tuned i'm so glad you watched this bye bye